Hello everyone. It's Crystal Cole, Ugly Duckling Master Educator. So I just wanted to pop on live today to do a demo with our Velveteen Acrogel. For those who may never have used this product before or are not familiar with our Acrogel, I'm going to show you how to use it and how we recommend you use it. If you have any questions, please let me know. So our Velveteen Acrogel is our rendition of a gel and acrylic hybrid. We recommend that you use this product over a natural nail or over a tip. So I have prepped my mom's nails now with the tips. I haven't fully finished them because I want to do some shaping while I'm live. But I did start with her natural nail prep, applied the tips, and I'm going to continue with the finishing of the prep as well so you guys can see how I do that. So our Velveteen does, does not self-level and it does not move. So wherever you place it is where it's going to stay until it's fully cured, which is awesome because you have all the time in the world to play with this product, basically applying a perfect application to help minimize the filing. It does not have an odor. It actually has kind of a nice sweet smell to it, which is, it, which is lovely. So this is a great option for those who maybe work in a salon and want more of that acrylic application feel, but without the smell. So it applies like an acrylic and it cures like a gel. Okay, so basically when it cures too, it does cure with a tack-free finish and it's almost kind of like a very soft velvety feel, which is, which is awesome. Um, curing time will depend on how thick and how much product you use. So if you do see after you have um, a, you know, cured it for maybe 60 seconds and you're noticing it still has a little bit of sheen to it, then it's not fully cured. All right, so I think I have Mother Duck on here with me. She is gonna help answer some questions. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start finishing prepping the tips here. So the tips that I have used are our premium fit tips. They come in 500 pack as well as 200 pack. These, these tips are made from a very high quality plastic. So there's no risk of splitting or shattering. And it's very, very clear, as you can see. So th these tips are a great option to use with any of our core systems. So I think what I'm going to do is just shape these into a slight taper, kind of a taper square. And I'm using our Ugly Duckling Medium file. This file is my favorite to use. We also do carry our coarse file, our fine file, and our recently new combo file, which is coarse and medium. I hope everyone's having a good afternoon, evening. It's very sunny here in Victoria. So I'm just kind of taking in the sides slightly. It's really nice when you're doing application of product over tips to get your shape where you want it prior to application. This is really going to help minimize your finishing filing at the end. So the great thing about these tips too is that you can create, you know, any shape, salon shape that you like. Whether it's a tapered square, you can keep them square. You can also shape them to a nice pointed almond, soft oval. They've got a beautiful built-in C curve. So these tips are a great option for clients who may have flat, um, wide nail plates because it's got that built-in curve already. So I'm actually gonna show you what that looks like. It's got a nice C curve in there. It's actually been a lot, this is the first time I've done my mom's nails in probably five months. Five months it is actually, it's been a long time, eh? So I applied the tips, just so you guys know, with our Ugly Duckling brush on glue. So it's really important too to make sure once you've created your, your shape, you're happy with your shape, um, to remove all the shine off of the tip. 
especially when you're using like a gel product. If you don't have that surface etched enough, then you definitely run the risk of having that product separate from the nail tip. I was going to mention something about the tips and I just completely forgot. Um, a lot of times people, you know, think tips are, you know, not a good quality product to be using. But if I'm being honest, I, I love the option of having a good tip as well as a form. We have um, a fabulous option for a premium or premium form, which is my favorite to use. But sometimes I like to just use a tip and we recommend that you use the Acrogel over tips or just natural nail to give it a little bit more strength and durability. That being said, a lot of people, including myself, have sculpted using um, the Velveteen over forms and have had no issues with the product breaking. So it is a softer product because it is a hybrid. So that is why we recommend tips. But if you don't necessarily sculpt too long on a form, you should be fine. And it's all about experimenting and not every case is going to work out for your clients. I have some clients who are extremely hard on their nails and there is no way that that product using a form would work or hold up on them. And some clients are more delicate and take care of their nails and that would be a perfect situation when that would apply. So now all I'm doing is taking our Ugly Duckling coarse buffer and I'm just going to remove all the shine. The great thing with these tips is you don't have to blend blend out that ridge because they are a wellless tip. So I just lightly go over the entire area and remove shine. Sometimes I might find these corners of the tip kind of stick up a little bit. No big deal. I will just kind of lightly buff them down or take my file to remove the thickness. The only time that would kind of affect my application is if I was doing a pink and white. So I'm just going to quickly finish buffing off the shine. It's really hard to use a table fan when I'm doing live demos. So as you can see, a lot of the dust is just kind of settling on this my gloves. And these tips are a great option to use too if your clients have our nail biters. I have my cousin who is an extreme nail biter and tips are the only thing that worked for her. I cannot sculpt on her, even with creating an extension or you know, pulling out her nail, her nail bed a little bit, bit longer. It just doesn't work using form. So having these tips are amazing. Okay. I'm just going to remove that corner only because it's not quite adhered with the glue. All right. So I think I'm happy with that. Let's get on to the application process. I'm just going to remove all the dust. All right. So the first step I'm going to do is I'm going to apply our prep, which is a cleanser dehydrator and it helps to balance the pH of the nail. And I'm just applying it right to the natural nail. I do not need to apply it over the entire tip, just the natural nail. And honestly, it's hard because we're so used to either doing an acrylic or a gel nail, and having a combination in a product sometimes takes a little bit to get used to. And of course, I was an acrylic girl right from the start, even though I love using all systems. But having this option is, is really nice to be able to apply a product like an acrylic and not have that odor. Because a lot of times I'm actually doing nails in my house, personally on myself, and um, when I was doing clients out of my little shop and it's just refreshing not to have that smell because I don't have a proper 
vent system where it will completely extract all of the odor. So having this option is great. Again, if you work in a salon environment or a spa, for example, where you can't have that strong odor, then this is a great option. So I'm going to allow that to set, kind of dry up. It's not going to dry to a chalky white finish, but I really want to make sure that I'm letting that dry completely before applying product. If we apply product too soon over top of a wet primer, we can actually run the risk of having little bubbles and or discoloration of the product. So if you're ever noticing that in your products kind of turning yellow, that could be a reason. All right, so we are ready to go. I've got my velveteen ready. I'm going to be using our Ugly Duckling Velveteen brush, which has the brush on one end and our spatula on the other. Word of note, be careful when you put the brush back into the lid, just so that you don't cause it to accidentally bump it. I've made that mistake a few times, so I just slow that down a little bit. Next thing we wanna grab is our gel cleanser. This is our liquid that we will be using. So application with this liquid, the gel cleanser with the velveteen, is different from a traditional monomer. We are not gonna use it like we do a traditional monomer. The idea of the cleanser is just to lightly slick your brush to avoid the product from sticking. So you guys will see how that works. I'm gonna use our beautiful crystal dappen dish. You guys gotta see that, look at that beauty. It's nice to have this on your table because it glistens in the sunlight. It's pretty to look at. I have one of these for my gel cleanser. My monomer actually work using color and just a traditional pink and white. Okay, so I'm just gonna use a little bit of our cleanser. Not a whole lot, because I'm not gonna need a lot for this. You'll find if it's taking forever for the velveteen to set up and fully cure in the light, it could be because you've used too much cleanser. So I'm gonna show you guys how we do that. Okay, mom, I'm gonna get your nail here. We're gonna work on the pinky. So we're gonna open up our velveteen tube. And I just kind of take the lid like that just so the little tail doesn't go everywhere. Keeps it nice and clean. And then I will use the spatula end. We're only going to take as much as we need per nail. It might take a little bit of time to get used to how much to apply to the nail based on what length you're using um, because the worst thing is to apply too much and then having to remove it. So I'm just gonna take a little bit, cut it off. And I can already tell that's probably gonna be slightly too much, but that's all right. If it is too much, then I'm gonna show you guys how you can remove some of that product. Okay. So now I'm just gonna lightly dip my brush into the Dappen dish with the cleanser. I'm just gonna roll it off the corners. And I'd like to just prep my brush, give it a couple pats, making sure that I'm not putting too much pressure on the brush itself. Again, if this is a brand new brush, you wanna make sure that you prep it properly. All new acrylic brushes will come with starch and they need to be worked out prior to using it in a liquid. Okay, so now I'm just gonna lightly dip. You guys can see that. I'm gonna drain it and a little bit on the other side. So it's not much. And then I'm gonna come in and very gently, I can already see with touching that product, I've got too much cleanser in my brush. So I'm just gonna remove it on the paper towel. Okay, so now I'm gonna focus on pressing and sealing it around the cuticle area and side walls. This brush is perfect because it gets into that small, tiny little area, just allowing the smallest amount of product to be sealed and then I'm going to work it towards the free edge. Remember, this is not going to set and it's not going to cure until it goes into the light, into our LED light. So take your time with application. That way you're going to have less filing to do, honestly. And this product files so easy. It's not as hard as a, an acrylic. So it doesn't take long for you to file the shape. Okay, so mom, I'm gonna get you to kind of twist weirdly this way. 
You guys can kind of see how I'm building up thin cuticle area apex. My product is right where it needs to go and I've got too much on it. It is super thick so I can actually come in and remove some. So what I'm going to do is just come in and pull it off the tip just a little bit and remove it with my spatula. This part can get a little tricky if you play with it too much, but I'll leave it like that. And if you have extra product, you can put it onto the next nail. In this case, I'm just gonna remove it. You can do all four fingers together and then cure, because it's not going anywhere. But I like to just kinda do a quick cure in between as I'm working. Like I'll, I like to go back and forth, so I'll do treat this like it's a gel. Set. So I'll do the pinkies on both hands, you know, go back and forth in my light, my lamps to cure it. Okay, so there is the application for that. I want to make sure it's good before I cure it. I'm going to pull some product in this area. And I've got minimal, minimal liquid on my brush. If you're noticing the product is starting to stick a bit to the brush, then that's when you need to use a little bit more of the cleanser. All right, mom, you can go ahead and put that in the lamp. All right, we're going to fully cure that. I think Yvonne is still there answering questions. Oh, oh, it was Priscilla. Hi, Priscilla. Oh, and I see Kathy there. Sorry, my claw is actually hiding most of my comments, so it is tricky to see them. They want to know what brush this one you are using. Yeah, so this brush is our our velveteen brush. So we have this for our velveteen. So it has the <coughs> brush on one end and then our spatula on the other. And they have protective lids for all the brushes to keep out any UV light exposure and keeps them nice and protective. We also have our brush case, which I love. It's my saving grace. If I didn't have my brush case, my brushes would be everywhere. My mom's actually rolling her eyes at me right now because she knows. So it helps me stay organized having that brush case. So if you guys didn't know we have brush cases, we do. So I'm just going to let that cure. I'm going to see. Let's have a peek. So this is just over 60 seconds. Let's have a peek. Okay, so it's getting close. It's almost done. You guys can see it's starting to mattify a little bit. I don't know if that's such a word, mattify. Um, it's very close, but it's not quite there. So I'll get you to go back in there, mom. It is a bit on the thicker side, so it's gonna take a bit longer to cure than if you apply to your natural nail. So I did mention you can use this product over your natural nail to kind of give shape uniform, you know, to clients that have the thin natural nails. We also have a great option for using our builder base, which kind of acts as the same idea where you follow it with a gel polish. So different products for different things. Okay, let's have a peek, actually. Let's have a look here. Okay, so great, it's looking awesome. So now what I'm gonna do is continue on, and I'm just gonna keep applying the rest of them so you guys can see. This does take practice, you guys, if it's something you're not familiar with working with, but honestly, once you do, it's amazing product. They want to know what colors the aqua gel Great. Is. It's funny because I was just going to say. So we have our clear. We also have it in white, foo-foo pink, and pink. Our pink is kind of like a bubblegum pink. I love it, especially for pink and white set. Um, that is full coverage, so it will cover the entire nail plate. So you can extend um, the natural nail with our pink as well as our foo-foo. And it makes for a beautiful pink and white. So we recommend you applying this in one bead if you can. Because what happens is if you, let's say you fully cure the nail and you realize that you are shy in one area, what I would recommend you doing is coming in and giving in a, a file etch it with a medium grit file or the 100 grit buffer just to rough the surface up so that it can have a better adhesion. Because if not, it's too shiny. It's just gonna, when you go to file into it, you'll see it'll just peel right off. 
Okay. Once you get in the hang of this, the service is very fast. And again, you take a little bit more time in your application, less filing time at the end. I love this brush because it really gets in the sidewalls, the cuticle area, very nice without actually touching the skin area. Because it's very important to make sure when we are applying product that we are minimizing our exposure to this client's skin. As well as our skin, that's why I wear gloves. But having a brush that is just easy to apply and easy to, you know, get in those small areas really makes it a lot better when you're applying. Sorry guys, I'm not sure if you can hear the motorbikes in the back and cars. We're actually just uh, beside a daycare and it's time for pickup. So all the traffic is here in the complex. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the... Someone wants to know how would you apply sparkle to the aqua gel? Um, that is a great question. Um, we are currently, we are working on this clear doesn't necessarily, isn't necessarily super, super crystal clear for inlays. However, I have worked with color and you, and it does work, but it's not super clear, if that makes sense. Um, if you wanted to do more of like a sugaring technique with glitter, you absolutely can. Um, that's more of a, a technique that you would use after the nail has been finished filed, application of a gel polish color, and then finishing with a sparkle on top. So what I would recommend just like with any product is doing all four first and then keeping your thumbs to last. If you're ever having issues with any product, not curing on the thumbs or product breakdown issues on the thumbs, it's most likely because the, the nails themselves have not got the proper exposure. And okay, mom, you can go into the light, please. Nope, thumbs are last. Um, and that's what I'm just mentioning now. The reason why we want to do thumbs last is because depending on how your client's hand actually goes in the lamp, this part of it, oh, you want to put it in a little farther? There we go. Um, this part of the nail is not necessarily getting exposed to the light. So I always either have my clients tip their thumbs up like this so that all the light is exposed on this side or just do the first four and then do thumbs separately. This person's asked second time. Can I just Yeah, it out sure. Go ahead. Okay. Can you please explain again what we need to do with new brushes before you... Sure. I received mine yesterday and haven't used it yet. Great, That's the second one. great. So all new brushes, um, our acrylic brushes, will contain starch when they're brand new. And it's to protect them in shipping. So they're gonna be really hard. So what I would recommend you doing is taking a piece of paper towel. We suggest not using your fingers because when you go to touch it with your fingers, you're actually transferring oils from your skin to the brush. So we recommend taking a little piece of paper towel and just going back and forth very gently on the brush like this. We don't want to go all the way back and forth because you're going to crimp it and wreck it. So going back and forth like this, looking up at the brush in the light, you're going to see all these little dust particles start to float up from the brush. That is the little bits of starch. You want to make sure you remove it completely before you put it into the acrylic liquid or a gel cleanser in this case because you can actually damage your brush. If there's starch still left in the belly of the brush, it kind of puffs it out. So you want to make sure that is removed. There's two options for cleaning brushes. We have a brush cleaner or our liquid monomer. We highly recommend you try to avoid the brush cleaner as much as possible because if you use brush cleaner a lot, it is actually very harsh and damaging on the, the hair. So the only time you would want to use a brush cleaner is if you actually got a piece of hard acrylic in your brush that you cannot remove with monomer. And in this case, when we're using our acro gel, we're using our cleanser. So I'm just lightly cleaning my brush at the end, make sure I'm wiping it out, removing all the product and putting on 
the lid to protect it. So we recommend using liquid monomer to always clean all acrylic brushes because that acts as a cleaner. It removes all the polymer beads from your brush so that it doesn't fully harden. Okay, let's have a peek. Okay, we're almost there. I'm gonna get you to go one more time, Mom. And then we'll finish with your thumb. And then I'm going to file. I'm not gonna finish with a color today. I just wanted to show you guys the application, answer some questions for you. I've got my great team behind me helping me with these questions um, as well. Just we, one more. Can sure, just, please. Uh, it, this per lady would like to know, would it be possible to blend sparkle gel polish to it? To make the sparkling effect oh absolutely yes you can do so many different nail art techniques using gel polish um little fine glitter inlays absolutely um we we have our obviously our full gel polish line which is excellent for creating various different nail tech um or pardon me nail art designs you can mix all of our gel polish we also have our art gel which is a thicker viscosity gel but great for doing high detailed work. Uh, Priscilla Homadiva, who is here today with me, she does all her hand painted designs with the art gel. So it just depends on what you are. Okay, Mama, I'll get your thumb out. What type of art you're doing for what product you're using. But the sky is the limit. Okay, so, and here you guys can see, I don't know if you can see in the light, there's a huge bubble right in there. I'm not going to worry about it this second because I'm going to see, you guys can see that right there. By the time I press it out, I'm hoping it will come out. If not, I'll just use my spatula or the tip of my brush and just kind of pop it out so it's not staying there. Because if it's close to the surface um, and we go to do our finishing filing, we'll file into that pocket and there'll be a hole. And unfortunately, nothing will cover that. So we just want to be aware. And this is great because if you're an acrylic lover and you love the padding and pressing motion of application, um, this product is for you. You know, it's great to work with. You have the option of using our clear, our pink, our fufu pink as a full coverage, depending on what you want. And you guys will see when I go to file it how simple and easy it is. Go ahead, yeah, if mom's got questions. Okay, it says, I have been using my Ugly Duckling Gel Brush with Aquadrip. When you say acrylic brushes, does the Ugly Duckling Gel one count two? Is there a difference? Okay, let's get you put that one. Okay, um, if yeah, straight in there, mom. Okay, so if you're talking about, if I'm correct, our Acrogel brush to apply this, you're using our gel brush to apply the acro gel? Absolutely. We did that, I did that for the first little bit until we had our velveteen brushes available, but it works just as fine. So you definitely can. Um, this is a great combo because it has the spatula on one end for easy removal of the product from the tube. And we also do have velveteen sliders that you can get that actually go on here like for toothpaste, you know those things, and it pushes every last little bit out of the tube that you can have as well. So that is a great question, but yes, absolutely. You can use our gel brush too. And be careful. This is where we get to you know, go right in the middle there and then we wreck our brush, unfortunately. So just be careful when you go to put the lids back on. So basically all the products that you need to do the velveteen is the velveteen itself. Again, it comes in pink, fufu, and white. You need our velveteen brush, our gel cleanser, and then our dappin dish if you want to have something pretty. But these three products are all you need to do velveteen acro gel, along with your other prepping products as well. Question, go ahead, yeah. It says, I have the Ugly Dusting number 10. Yeah. 3D detailer and gel 
Should they all be maintained slash clean the same? Okay, so that's a great question and thank you for asking. So basically with our um, acrylic brushes, to clean them correctly before storing them with the lid is using our liquid monomer to clean in a, our, your Dappen dish. Really make sure you're removing all the polymer beads. Same with the 3D brush because of course you're using it with an acrylic powder. Really make sure that you take the time after the application to remove all the polymer beads in the brush. Because if you don't, it's gonna sit overnight and that's when the hard acrylic is gonna form, then virtually it's impossible to remove with the monomer. So that's when you're gonna have to use brush cleaner. Again, brush cleaner is very harsh on the hair and that's when it kind of, it dries it out. It can cause it to split over time with repetitive use. So if you can get in the habit of using monomer, that is the best thing you can do for your acrylic brushes. When you're using art brushes, for example, like striper detailer brushes, what we recommend is cleaning, cleaning it in um, a top coat or a little bit of gel to remove color. The problem with using alcohol to clean brushes is it's very drying and it will like cause the bristles to fray. So we recommend cleaning in like a top coat. You can use a base and top, which we have. The name on that will be turning in, um, changing to tacky top, just so there's no confusion there. Um, or a no wipe top coat, just cleaning it, making sure you remove it, of course, in your paper towel and then putting the lid on. Having that lid is going to avoid any exposure, causing that the small, finest hairs to cure. But we find that's the best way to fully um, clean your brushes and keep them in good shape. Okay, let's have a peek, Mom. Okay, the thumb is a little bit still wet. So can you go back in there? And let's make sure it's really up there. And if not, I'm just going to focus on filing the first four and leave the thumbs after. So you guys can just see quickly how easy it is to file the nail. And again, I'll show you guys. We have our course file, which is a great file to taking down bulk real fast. The medium is my go-to, especially with especially with doing Acrogel, it's a soft product. You don't need to have a coarse, coarse file. Using a coarse file on the Acrogel is going to strip that product down real quick. Okay. All right, mom, I think we're going to call that a day and leave the thumb. All right. So now I'm just going to come in and I'm going to just do a quick shape. You guys can use an e-file if you like. which I will be, but I like to pre-shape. I like to pre-shape a little bit more, getting my sidewalls where I want them, cleaning up the free edge. And just so you guys know, right now we have our aprons on a special this month. I can't believe it's already the 20th of July. This whole month has just flown by so quickly. Doing a quick shape here. So I like to do that. Just gonna do a nice taper. I'm gonna switch to my e-file so that it will be a little bit quicker here. And I'm using our, this is um, our medium sanding band, or medium sanding band, not this one. This is our medium carbide bit, which is my favorite. We also have it in course, but this is my go-to to remove the bulk. But honestly, I have to be very careful. I'm putting the lightest pressure on here because if I put too much, it's gonna cut right through like butter. So definitely a lot lighter on my, my filing techniques. But I love these um, bits because it has that safety in. So you can touch the skin and it's not gonna cut. Does anyone have any other questions? Well, there's one lady here who says you should do the lives more often. I love this. Oh, good. Yeah. I'm definitely going to make an effort of doing it. I think I'm going to aim for 
Thursdays, Thursday afternoons, probably this is the time I started at four o'clock. Actually, I started a bit late today. Um, th Thursdays are going to be working the best because I also work in the warehouse and pack all the orders during the day. So um, I am doing that. But yes, I definitely will. If you guys have any suggestions on what you would like to see, you can always email me on my work email, which is Christical. That's C H R Y S T A C L E dot ugly duckling at gmail.com. You guys can also um, go to my personal Instagram page, which is at Christical, or I guess I can just say Christical. And I also have a Facebook page, which is Christical Does Nails to see any of my work. You can also reach out to me personally on Instagram if you have any questions. There's one lady here. I'd love your dappin dish. Oh. Is that for sale? Oh, yes, it is. Oh, I'm on Lisa. Sorry. Um, no, it's okay. Yes. Let me put it back into view. Um, our crystal dappin dish, dish is for sale. Um, it is genuine crystal. So we have it, um, our dappin dish. We have our crystal tip display as well as our beautiful crystal palette for all you artists who like to have a paint palette. They are on our website, so you can visit us at www.uglyducklynails.com to take a look at all our products. We also have a list of all our distributors. You can take a look at and see if there's one close to you. But again, we're always here for support. We, um, we want everyone to know that you can reach out to us anytime you have questions. Uh, we would love it if you could do that to our contact.uglyduckling at gmail.com email address. That info you can find on our website as well. But yes, I definitely want to be coming on, doing lives, product support, helping answer questions. Because we love our products and we hope that you love them as much as we do. And I'm very proud to... What is Show the name them? of your drill bit that you're using? Yeah, so that was called our medium carbide safety bit. We have that in coarse safety carbide as well. We also carry a shaper bit, which is another type of a, a carbide, carbide bit, as well as a refiner, which is a small carbide bit that you can use to clean out the natural nail. And then, of course, we sell our um, sanding bands or medium sanding bands and our mandrel. But I kind of, I pick my favorites and my favorite is the medium carbide. That's my go-to and the medium sanding bands. I like to keep it simple. Okay. I'm almost there, you guys. So you guys can see, I'm not going to bother with the thumb. I, I remember even back in the day when I was first starting nails, thumbs, I hated thumbs. I hate doing thumbs. You know, if I didn't have to do thumbs, that'd be awesome. I'm not sure if it was just because the nail is so wide or it's just because it's always like a a shorter finger and it's harder to, I don't know. It's just me. So I'm not going to bore you guys with that today. We got one of our employees, Debbie. She's she's leaving on on the Harley right now. That's the noise you guys hear in the background. So basically, I just want to talk to you guys quickly a little bit about how you want to finish your nail enhancement prior to gel polish application. If you are ever experiencing polish from chipping or peeling off of the enhancement, there's a reason why. Your surface is too fine. Um, and I was just working with a lovely lady through email yesterday um, she reached out because she had some issues with the gel polish peeling off of our acrylic. So just talking her through, figuring out the steps, and it turned out she was using alcohol to clean off the surface area prior to application. And of course, alcohol completely smooths out the surface of an acrylic. So that's why it peeled off of the enhancement. So when you're using a gel polish, it's really important to make sure it is finished how it's supposed to be. Just gonna dust my nails and hands off. So we recommend finishing with a coarse buffer. 
or you can finish with a medium sanding band if you choose before putting on the gel polish. If you finish with anything finer, then you run the risk of having the gel polish peel. So that's what we recommend. I'm just gonna switch to this, my, it's really important to make sure you dust, move all that dust. I don't have them here, but we also sell little protectors, um, dust protectors for your e-file as well, which is really good to have to prevent any issues. This I'm just gonna clean up around the cuticle area and sidewalls, making sure that I get that ridge out so it's nice and flush. This feels good to get back into it because I have not done nails in a long time, you guys, only on myself when I wanna play. But I know everyone's starting to slowly get back to work and salons are able to open up. It's amazing, it's such a different world that we're living in today. Okay, I'm just gonna leave it at that. Let's do a quick buff. And then we're done. I'm not gonna put any color on now because I'm still gonna do mom's other hands and we haven't decided what we're gonna do yet. Priscilla was asking that. Oh Priscilla. Maybe I'll maybe I'll draw maybe I'll draw like a character or something. Oh, did you hear that, Priscilla? Oh. Yeah, right. Priscilla's she asked, like... Actually, she asked me if you're going to bleed me out. Oh, it's funny. And I oh. said, no, bleed. <gasps> see, Priscilla, she didn't even say that to me because she didn't want to put it into my head. Um, no, Priscilla's like, show me that um, character design. No, there's no way. Priscilla's the queen of that. It's amazing because for me, like, that would not be something I have patience for. So, yeah, do Barbie. No Barbie, Priscilla. <laughs> yeah. Um, I love Barbie. No, but for me, like doing bling application, hand filing like this, this is my jam. This is what I enjoy doing. I absolutely love application shaping. And it's amazing because everyone has their niche. Everyone has their thing that they like to do. Somebody was asking what speed your drill was on. That's a good question. I think it was about a, at a five. At a five. All right, you guys. So I think that's good enough for now. I, it's not exactly perfect because I'll probably come back and revisit the buffing when I go to actually apply the color. But I am going to leave it at that so you guys could see the application process of our Velveteen Acra Gel. Um, I will let you guys know that, of course, um, we don't promote soaking at Ugly Duckling. We, you know, want to minimize the amount of exposure to chemicals as much as possible um that being said velveteen acro gel does eventually break down in the soaking process but it's not worth the time of waiting for that to happen for easier file velveteen files so smooth that you'll file it off quicker than you will sitting waiting for it to soak just so you know the time i couldn't even tell you i think it was like over 15 minutes until I noticed it slowly starting to break down um, because it is a hybrid product, right? It is acrylic and gel, but it's not gonna soak like a traditional acrylic. Okay, any last questions um, for me? What, what, I just, I think I just see one. The grit buffer course is about 100 grit. Um, we don't put grits on them, however, when we go and talk about, let's do it like this, our coarse buffer and our coarse file, they're both about, a, they're 100 grit. Our medium and medium buffer, about a 180. And then our fine file and buffer is a 240. I had to think about that for a second. <laughs> it's like the math in my head. That, that took me a second, like I literally went blank. Um, but also remember how we show you guys in our manual online and our procedures of using a medium grit file, for example, may be different from 
other files. Not all files and buffers are made equal. So that is something to take into consideration if, let's say you're having issues with the polish peeling, you're using our polish, our gel polish, but you're using a different buffer, that buffer could possibly be finer. So that could be the issue. So that's why it's very important to reach out to us directly if you have any issues with our products and not turn to social media because a lot of times we don't see these comments or questions that are being asked and we're not able to help you. So we are there to support you as much as we can if you are contacting us directly. So please, again, um, email us at contact.uglyduckling at gmail.com for any questions that you may have. If you currently do not have a... I went blank. An account for our website um, is getting late. It's the end of the day. I'm tired. Um, if you don't have an account with us currently, you can set send us your license or certification or proof that you're a working professional and we would be glad to send you a link to register for an account. We are a professional only brand so we do not sell to the general public. Our mission is to support all the working professionals. Um, please follow us on YouTube at Ugly Duckling Nails. We also have our Facebook page Ugly Duckling Nails for all advertisements um, as well. If you yeah I think that's it. I think I've talked enough. I think you guys are probably done with me for the day. Um, I'm just going to quickly look at some questions. I'm moving my claw for half a second. They want to know yeah. if the drill from Ugly Duckling. Yeah, yeah. It, it is. Um, okay, so about the e-file situation. For any distributors that are listening right now, I will be emailing you tonight. I knew this might come up in conversation. Um, we decided to discontinue and not sell our e-files anymore. But it's amazing how many people in the last six months have been requesting our e-files. I'll show you guys quickly. So we have decided to bring them back. This is our e-file. It's hard to see in here, the hand piece. So they are going to be available in September. A great unit, the best e-file I've personally used. We have a contact on our website. Um, his name is Jason. He services all the hand pieces for continuing with maintenance on the hand piece. So that is also a bonus. So yes, those will be available in September. I think it was okay for me to say that. We'll see. We'll see. Um, okay. Any other questions before I sign off for the night? I appreciate you guys joining me today. And again, please let us know if we can help you in any way. All right, I think that's it. I hope you guys have a great evening, morning, afternoon, depending on where you are located in the world. Lots of love from Ugly Duckling in Victoria. Oh, um, Kathy from AR Nail Supply. She is one of our lovely distributors in Canada um, with our e-files. And I know it's it was sad when we stopped them. It was hard to because I love them, 100% support them. But now everybody wants them. So it's perfect. Perfect timing. Okay, you guys. I'm going to leave it for now. I will see you next time. Keep in mind, I'm going to try to aim for Thursdays at 4 o'clock on the Ugly Duckling Instagram page. Okay, until next time, bye from Crystal.